has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. every step unsettled the ancient earth but we were in a realm of death and madness in the end i alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity until consciousness failed me you remember our venerable house opulent and imperial <laughs> It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. <laughs> Welcome, guys. This is Darkest Dungeon. I'm Joshua Jericho. We're going to jump in. I have not played this in a very, very long time. Uh, the last time I played this, the darkest dungeon itself, the last dungeon in the game, was not yet in the game. Uh, I played it during alpha and beta phases and, and pre-release and all of that and whatever else they called it. So it's been a long time, but it's time to dive back into the shadows. See what evil lurks. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. All right. Sorry for the soda bottle pop there. <laughs> yeah. Those things always pop at like the worst time. Like, come on, man. Come on. Old road with the stagecoach destroyed and the caretaker gone. You will have to make the journey to the Hamlet on foot. All right. So let's see if I can remember how to play this. Game. But yeah, it has been an incredibly long time. Oh, that's right. Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. So it plays kind of like a 2D scroll. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion. That all but you have of your arrival. You have these um, combat events that play more like a regular tactical or regular turn-based RPG. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the game, I will tell you right now, it's not easy, and it's brought low and driven into the mud. It's purposely cruel, and you'll see as we play through the game, like it's just 
harsh and cruel. Um, for one thing, you have limited number of slots, so unlike other games where you I would reward for a task well performed. earn your leave nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. An ambush. Like, Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. So, like, where you would normally get to collect all the treasure you find uh, in this particular game. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what all the abilities are. In this particular game, you have to make choices. Because what you take in and what you take out are all limited by the number of splats you have here. Um, and that's just one thing. But So you can see I've got my Marshman character. He's got a gun and... Uh, he's a highwayman. He's got a gun and a, and a dagger. So we can do melee and weapons. And where you are positioned actually matters as well. Then you have your knight in the front who has no shield. Just a sword. So I can stun him. Nope. So I can buff myself. Yep, okay. You can see the bus down and the bus are down here. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. And yes, after they die, there is a corpse, as gruesome as that is, that you have to clear out first. Or you, you can make the corpses bleed, though, which I always thought was funny. So I can't actually reach the guy in the back until I get through the corpse. Now, it probably just sounds gruesome and unnecessary, but the corpses also have other factors. There are monsters that use corpses. There are abilities that use corpses. So, corpses actually play in the game, and they work well on your side too. Give them no quarter, because let's say you're in a boss fight. When your people die, you have your corpse left over. That way, your positioning of people stays the same if you want it to. So, if you have somebody in the back row that you want in the back row, they don't move up because of somebody dying. The adventuring because you have to open the chest. It's trapped, but I resisted it because I'm awesome. Or I'm lucky, one or the other. And as you finish off these quests, you can get traits. Some are good and some are bad. Robust is good, less likely to get disease. Uh, fragile is obviously bad, less HP, especially for a tank level type character. Great. Oh well. It's never easy. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. All right, so you can see here I have quest goals that I have to go through and uh, try to progress through and you're going to try to level your guys up and here you have your city. It is literally in squalor right now. Uh, you can see the artwork, shabbled and broken houses and stuff. And way back there in the distance is where your old castle were manner is so most will end up here covered in the poisoned earth awaiting merciful oblivion hopefully not too many but we'll find out in time you will know the tragic extent of my failings so here you can watch the old movies and you can see there's plenty of stuff to do so we're gonna have work ahead of us on this game and I'm gonna be really honest, like I said. Men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. 
All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Uh, I hadn't actually beat the game before because it didn't have a beat, a way to beat it before. Um, and I know a lot of stuff's changed, so I'm kind of excited to get to try it again and see how it's different from before and how much I can remember. But at the same time, like, I'm just really excited because I want to do this. So we got lucky here. We have um, a healer and a, or actually I think you always get these now. I don't think you used to. Uh, but cleric is a healer a sister of battle pious and unrelenting and a plague doctor what who's better awesome. laboratory than the blood soaked battlefield and then ooh, that's new you didn't used to get this experienced recruits provide a chance for higher level recruits appearing at the stagecoach that's new. That's probably to balance out like when you get to higher levels and you're doing more challenging dungeons, your characters will die and then you'll start all over again. See how they're level one right now? Or, well, these guys are level zero. These guys are level one. And when you get to like higher quests, you're like level four and you lose somebody that's like level four or five character or even a three character and you get a zero to put into it, it's just a killer. Like balancing your roster is a really hard part of this game. So that's probably why they added that in. All right, so let's see. I can either increase the number of available heroes or increase the roster size. Um, probably don't need to increase roster yet, but we do want to get the number of heroes. I guess we can get the roster size too. We need both. Foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned. So then, what happens is this is just what I have now, and then when I finish a quest and I come back, there will be more heroes here to choose from so and yes i will embark because there really is anything to do mecca of madness and morbidity your work begins so this is the darkest dungeon which i don't never had access to and cove which i never played like i got um access to it near the end of the time i was playing it before but Cove was really hard in comparison to the others because of the way the game was set up at the time. So um, I never have seen Cove. So I've only seen these three. And so that'll, that kind of gives you an indication of where I'm at in terms of uh, the gameplay. So I didn't even look at what the characters have here, but I can't really, <laughs> can't really do anything about it because I don't have any way to like change their abilities yet. Uh, we will later. Everybody's got four ability slots, but there are, I think, six abilities for each character. So you can kind of decide who gets what. But as they come in, they might only know one skill or two skills or whatever. But unfortunately, because I only have these four characters and I need four characters, I don't really have a choice. So, again, uh, right now I don't have a choice on this either. If this is the only quest I have, it is a short quest. And the goal is to get 90% of the rooms cleared and I will get a move skill chance... Um, stone and these crests and you can see down here i've got uh you you mine busts portraits deeds and crests by doing these quests and you need the different things in order to upgrade the things in your town and it, the reason the code was so hard before was because they used to have it so ruins would only have one thing worn like crests and warns would only have like busts and wield would only have like portraits or whatever and then Cove would have the last thing and the reason that was so hard is because if you were in town and you need to upgrade things you you saw with the stagecoach I needed two things to upgrade it well whatever the cove had if you didn't have access to it before and you didn't have the things to upgrade let's say your abilities or your armor or whatever then you were kind of screwed to be able to go any further so i my understanding is that they've changed that now so that it's all random what you get from these things or maybe two options or something so that you can balance out a little bit better. So let's jump into the first uh, dungeon here. We're going to provision first. The cost of preparedness measured now in gold, later in blood. You will always need a lot of food. Um, I usually take at least eight for a short mission, and that still may not be enough, to be honest. We'll see. Um... 
I like to have at least one shovel, but I kind of tend to take two. Uh, you need torches, and I would say probably at least ten of these. And I'm going to take one key. So as you can see, my inventory slot now is already half gone <laughs> going into this. But um, that's just what I have. Some of this stuff you have to have. And especially when you go to higher level dungeons, you're going to need more and more and more stuff. It's insane how much stuff you're going to need later on. So here we go. The very first dungeon on this brand new run. And of course, if you guys didn't catch it at the beginning, I named the manor Jericho Manor. Because I'm really creative and, <laughs> and exciting. So here's the way the dungeons work. You can see I've got this little map down here. And here are the rooms that I have to go through. And as you travel into each room, there's a chance for like a trap or something. Um, or an ambush. Uh, or a chest. All kinds of different things. A boss fight, depending on which dungeon you're in. Um, and in between the rooms... Same kind of thing. Like, you could run into monsters. You could find things like this uh, torch that I just salvaged. Yay, I have a tor another torch. Um, traps. There's all kinds of stuff in between rooms that can happen. So here you see I get um, a boss fight, or I mean, I get ambush fight, and I also get a chest. So... So, in this particular fight, not super useful, but what that ability does is it can move somebody forward in the group. So let's say they've got a healer back here and I need to pull them forward. So, healers got... Eh, the fiend falls, not bad. The fiend hope blossoms. Executed with impunity. Yes. Early ones are kind of easy. And I should probably be more careful now I think about it because that could very well have been a trap. Um, oh, and you also get a chance to scout for time you're in a room, which shows you what's coming up ahead of time. So now you can see in the next room, on the way to the next room, I'm going to have an obstacle, which is probably something I can use the shovel for, and then an ambush. So, yep, shovel. Even this the is old stone seems bent on preventing passage. That's why I like to bring the shovel. You can't get through it without the shovel. It just costs you sanity. And you can see down here these little meters. See, he's got two stress, uh, 23 stress out of 200. Um, those meters fill up and bad things happen, basically. It's kind of hard to explain the game, the game too much while I'm playing it, uh, but I'm trying. I'm doing what I can for you. And as always, if you guys have questions, you don't understand stuff that's going on, feel free to comment in the in the videos, commenting bar boxes, and let me. I can't even talk. Feel free to comment and let me know. You know, hey, I don't understand what's going on here. What is that? Things like that. I used to play this on on stream on Twitch, and it was a lot easier then because people would just ask, and I could just really quickly reference them, trying to guess ahead of time what people might be asking this time. So. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Then when you see those rings, when something good happens, like that crit, um, what's good about that is when you see those light rings, it lowers people's stress. So he was at 23 before, and now he's at 19. So his stress goes down because of it. And the idea is you want to try to, typically, you want to try to set it up so that you are um, I don't want to phrase this. Typically, you want to set it up so that you are never high stress, but there are some characters that are in the game that I haven't played very much with because they were added later who actually specialize in your their stress being high or your party stress being high and then like fluctuating. So, another abomination cleansed from our lands. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. So here's the torch light. Uh, you can see the meter goes down. The lower the meter is, the more stress you get. 
the more the monsters have damage and accuracy and can hurt you, the more you, likely you are to be surprised. But you also get more crits and better loot, so there's advantages to it. And you'll see some people playing the game will do like all dark runs. And I've never done one. I might do one sometime, but not this time. This time we're just going to try to get through the game because <laughs> I haven't done it. Um, so I bring the torches so that I can refill it because basically I'm trying to control stress. Um, I know I'm a big baby, but hey, sometimes you got to be a big baby. To battle with curio or treasure. Well, I'm going to try to clear the whole place anyway. So, um, when you're... Okay, so here's the backpack. And it doesn't really matter who goes for things Packs all the time. Loot are often low on supplies. Ooh, I didn't even realize I had a protection stone relic. Okay, so we're going to put the protection stone relic on him. Because he's in the front line, so. Okay, this is actually bad. I let the, the porch light go down. Um, I'm going to load it back up real quick. So that they don't beat the crap out of me. Okay, so. Light's nice. That's what's really nice about the Plague Doctor is lots of dots. Okay, so now we're going to start healing. is working out well early but this is again this is early <laughs> trust me when I'm when I tell you that later on uh, this game gets vicious and if you have not seen it before you can maybe kind of even tell a little bit like maybe kind of see how it's so you can kind of tell like early on here how it's gonna get harsher and harsher okay Take all nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beat. Chest. See, here's the uh, bust. Like a statue, guys. Like a statue. Not a. <laughs> this would not be. This would be dankest dungeon if it was the other kind of bust, which is not that funny of a joke. I know because everybody makes that joke, but whatever. He's still bleeding. Do I have a band-aid to give him? No, I didn't buy any band-aids because I'm a jerk, apparently. Whatever. Hey, here's a trap. So, you want to use somebody's good with traps to try to trigger them? Or you can just let your person walk right into it because he's an idiot. Good job. Nothing in this room, but I do have scouting. I am going to go battle with Kyrio. I don't know what Kyrio is. Um, I'm going to guess it's just a villainous thing. Okay, so try again with the trap, dude. Hey, there you go. This time you got it. See, getting a trap actually lowers the stress level. Great. Wonderful. Now, health will restore. This is, this is a really important note. Health will restore after, or it, it should restore, if I remember right, after every expedition. But... Stress does not. You have to do special things in order to replace stress. So, that's another reason you want to keep stress low, is because if you don't, you'll have to take the part, person, that's why you have a huge roster. You'll take a person out of your team and have them go to the bar or a tavern or the priest or whatever they need to do in order to release stress. And they lose that week. Like, they're going to be doing that um, because you cannot take people in these dungeons where they have really high stress because they will lose their mind. If they lose their mind, they will either kill themselves or kill other people on the team. 
most of the time there are chances good things can happen but they're very small chances this whole game is filled with chance and it's kind of a fun exploration on the idea of like what actually would happen to people exploring dungeons like this except in this case the dungeon is horribly gruesome this is not like a final fantasy happy time dungeon this is like intense you know degradation evil dungeon you know skeletons and zombies and ghouls and horrible monsters and zealots that like to rip you apart and old gods will show up and all kinds of horrible things you'll see so psychologically it's a really interesting game in that term Ooh, let's so you see he got hit by crit and then everybody immediately went whoa crap and now they're all stressed out again so. I think in the next video we'll go a little more as we get more of these classes we'll go into more of what each class is best at and designed for and that kind of thing um, i'm not really doing too much of that right now um i'm taking a moment to look up this curio because it has been a long time and i don't necessarily remember what all the curios can do Okay, so it can. This is a stress heal curio, so I'm actually going to use the doctor, and I'm going to use holy water on it. Apparently, it increases the chance. There we go. Nice. Okay, so that lowers the stress by twenty. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So yeah, it's a little cheaty to have the Wikipedia open and help me through this, but I need it. This is a tough game, guys. <laughs> You'll see as we go. You'll see as we go. A lot of other people will already have it memorized. If I had been continued to play this game as much as I was playing it, I used to play it a lot. Um, I know I'm not really looking at my Steam at the moment, but I'm going to guess I've got something around the 60 to, to 80 hours area, probably 60 to 70 hours. 80 might be a little high. Um, and that was before the real release of the game. So I, I used to play this game a ton. Um, so in terms of that, you know, I like. I did play a lot, but again, I didn't get the last two dungeons in the game really, and a lot of stuff changed. Like there are classes that I've never actually played with, so it's going to be fun to kind of explore this together and see what's changed, what's new, how bad I can do, because I will probably do a bad job, and I'm already accepting it. <laughs> but we'll try, guys. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can move him to the front here. Okay. So, oh, actually, I think that clears all corpses, right? Yeah, so that's an ability that will clear corpses for me so that he automatically moves up to the front. Which makes it easier for, like, the knight character here, or crusader. I forgot his name was crusader. The, oh, I was just about to say it makes it easier for the crusader to hit, and then the idiot misses. So... We're getting near the end of the uh, dungeon here, so I don't mind using the torches a little more freely. You see their stress just will randomly appear on people sometimes as they're moving around just because you're in a dungeon and it's stressful. Okay, so that happened. See where he says I'm keeping this for myself, a reward hard and earned. Uh, that happened because this character has a trait of some kind that and I don't remember how to look at it. I don't remember. There it is. Okay. Uh, kleptomaniac. So prone to stealing items. So every once in a while, he's just going to steal something out of the bag. Whatever he gets is his. And I don't even get it. Uh, and here's hunger. Okay. So hunger pops up and I can eat food for everybody. And they get health. If I don't, then they all take more damage and stress for the rest of the dungeon. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. So that's what... That's the entire intent for food. That's pretty much it, guys, is that you are going to use it. I'm going to continue adventuring because there's another room to go. Uh, at this point, I could leave. You can see up here in the corner it says quest complete. I can leave at any time now. Um, but I am going to continue because there's one more room. And I want to clear as much stuff as I can on these earlier dungeons. Because I want to, one, I want to make money 
especially for the items I bought. Like, you know, I you buy all these things, the shovel and all this kind of stuff. That's gone. Like, once I'm done with this dungeon, I've lost that money. Um, so you got to try to make up as much money as you can by killing monsters, finding treasure, that kind of stuff. Um, but you also want as many items as you can. You also want as many chances to get good traits to level up, all of those kind of things. Your number of dungeon visits are kind of limited in this game, so you want to make the most out of every dungeon you can and push yourself as far as you possibly can go. Since my team is mostly healthy in this case, I'm actually pushing pretty hard. So uh, these guys, the clown guys back here, I say clown is a skeleton with blood down his mouth because he's drinking wine or blood or whatever. See? Gruesome guys, I'm telling you. Uh, he's really dangerous if I remember right, so we're going to try to get rid of him fast. Not that the crossbowman's any better, necessarily, but... Okay, she's going to heal everybody on this round. Not as much, but at least it's a heal. You'll notice the damage numbers are like 5 to 4, type things 3. Heals are going to be in the 1 to 5 area, depending on what level heal it is. Um, this is a much, like, think of this as D&D. &D. Like, if you guys ever played D&D, &D, you know, like, when you're playing D&D, &D, a lot of times you're, like, rolling a 1d6 for damage. Like, you're not talking about, like, in Final Fantasy where you're, like, hitting a character and it's, like, 700 damage. Like, this is going to be low numbers, um, which is actually <laughs> great because it helps with the math. <laughs> so... Oh, good. Stun both of the guys in the back, and they're both plagued. So now when it's their turn, they'll just take damage. That is fantastic. All right. He'll just take damage. Doesn't get to do anything. Love it. Best news ever. Okay. Build the Crusader up. On a side note, if you guys are watching, uh, if anybody wants to be named after something, I will be glad to change your name. In Twitch, I used to do this too. Um, you can actually change the names of all the characters. And I will be more than happy to change the name to your character, to, uh, to a name for you. Uh, as long as the name is not offensive, you know, like I'm not going to put like something crazy offensive in there. Um, sorry, but I just don't do that kind of stuff. Um, but. Outside of that, I'll be happy to just clear all the corpses and move him forward. Um, but yeah, I'd be glad to put, like, if your name is, like, Mark Tr MarkTron73, then I can put MarkTron73, um, or whatever. So, if, you, if you're interested, if I haven't finished the game yet, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously I'm putting these up one at a time, but say you find this five, you know, five months from now, and... You're watching it obviously at that point i can't do it anymore so but uh up, you know i'll check the comments if you guys are quick on it and you want in then i'll be glad to do that and uh, what i might do is in future if uh if this does well and i decide to do another run later which i probably will someday um i'll maybe ask for names ahead of time or whatever but tell me what you uh which character you'd like to be uh try to be specific you know if you can give me the current name like, instead of just saying Crusader, you might say Renald, because I'll eventually have more than one Crusader. So, and uh, what I'll do is, if you ask for a certain Crusader and he's already taken, then I might give you a second one. So, something like that. Um, actually, we're... In, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Can I change who opens it? Yeah, okay. I'm going to have the Highwayman open it because of that. Because I, if some of those traps will actually do instant damage. And you don't want your lowest level character to, <laughs> to be the one to do it. Okay, so the dungeon is done now. We finished it all up, so we're going to get out of here. Get our rewards. Collect all of our loots. So you do get some amount of the things that you buy before. You do get to sell them back. Like, I have the extra shovels. Um... You get a sum back, but they're for an obvious not for the same price. So you lose some money, but you know, I made 2,500 gold. That's pretty good. So. Let's see how bad the damage was. Everybody's level one now. Um, that's what this resolve XP is. It goes into here. 
And as you can see, like you only need like eight to get to level two. Let's see what quirks we get. Oh, resilient. That's a good one. More stress healed. That's great. Hey, look at that. Another one. Wield adventure means that when we go into the wield areas, they'll have bonuses. So that's great. So overall, I would say that the first dungeon, in general, you feel it. The walls between the sane world and that unplumbed dimension of delirium are tenuously thin here. Tenuously here. Okay. So I would. Well, you know what? We're gonna do this. Um, so successfully complete the first one. Yay! So now I have to start beating the bosses. <laughs> That's going to be the next big goal. All right, so let's start here with the cavern and stress relief. Pants, cards and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. Okay, so you have a bar, a gambling hall, and a brothel. And you put the person, you can see the stress level, so... Aslan right now has really high stress levels, so my my cleric. So I would want to probably heal her if I have another healer option to take in instead. Then you have the, the abbey. Have been dusted. The pews set straight. The abbey calls to the faithful. And the abbey lets you have your cloister um, for meditation, a prayer, trans uh, transept, and then also a penance hall for <laughs> you know penance violations and stuff. Basically, um, healing through, through da uh, damage. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I did not get another healer, so Aslan's going to have to go in again on, on this next one. You I, you got to have a healer. Like, that's the one kind of, like, general rule. Um, so the bad news is I got to have a healer, so What's she's going in. laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? Okay, so here you can see night blindness. Um, if I was running a blind campaign, I wouldn't want this character, but since I'm not, it's probably fine. So that's actually pretty good. You can see here they have, um, I guess it's seven. So you have seven abilities that you can have, and they have four to start off with on this character. And preferred position is where they would want to be in the in the running. Um, we'll go over all that in the next one. I'm just going to grab these characters Shoot. for now. Bandage and pillage. Um, the dancing steps of war. Whew. This is going to be rough. Mm, more likely to get bleed effects. More likely to stress at below HP, which I don't think is good for this character. Um, actually, I may not take this guy. I don't really need him right now. And if I remember right, his stuff causes a lot of stress. Um, we'll get into that another time. I'm not going to worry about it. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and call it right there. Um, we didn't get another healer, which means I'm not going to be able to put anybody into any kind of uh, he, um, restoration situation. So we'll look at that next time. But that is the first dungeon of Darkest Dungeon. And we are well on the way, guys. And hopefully we can make this awesome. We'll see. I will be here. And on the next video, we will get going. We'll get this really rocking at the Jericho Estate. And we will make Jericho great again. So I'll catch you again, guys. Thanks for watching.